This is section 12.3, Measures of Dispersion. And there are four objectives. One would be to find the range of a data set, then to calculate the so-called standard deviation of a data set, then how to interpret measures of dispersions, and then calculating the coefficient of variation. And as we learned that the mean uh, is a good indication of the central tendency of a set of data values. That's about this, you know, what number would be representative of the whole data set. But it does not necessarily completely describe the data. So when we look at this table three, uh, two data sets, A and B, uh, with the same mean and even with the same median. And yet when you look at the numbers very closely, you find out that that a data set B is more spread out or has a greater dispersion than data set A. If you just look at it superficially, data set B goes from 1 to 13, so there's a difference of 12 there, and data set A goes from 5 to 9, which is simply a difference of 4. So um, that is one of the measures of dispersion, and we call that the range of a data set. And so the, for any set of data, the range of a set of, is defined as follows. The range is the greatest value in the, in the set minus the least value in the data set. So the range for distribution A is 9 minus 5 or 4. And the range for distribution B is uh, 13 minus 1 or 12. Now, that's a quick way of finding out something about the, uh, uh, the measure of this as a measure of dispersion for the range. It's a fast one, it's an easy one, but the disadvantage lies in the fact that it makes use of only two of the numbers in the whole data set, and at the least and the greatest value, either way. So uh, to better describe the dispersion, we want to make use of as many of the data set values as possible. A very common and widely used uh, measure of dispersion is the uh, standard deviation. And um, so let's just read the definition. Let a sample of n numbers, x sub 1, x sub 2 to x sub n, have a, have a mean of x bar. Then the sample standard deviation s of the numbers in the, is calculated as follows. The square root of, and remember this is a summation sign, of the data values minus the mean squared divided by n minus 1. That looks a bit complicated, and in reality, well, it is somewhat uh, complicated, but um, I will show you exactly how this is done. Now, when you look at this, uh, you realize that this approach makes use of all the data values, because to get to the mean, you have to look at all the data values. And then, you know, by subtracting each data value from the mean and squaring it and so on, you get a much, much better representation of the spread, the standard deviation, as, as you can think of. So, and there are some very specific steps, six altogether, how to calculate the standard deviation, and we'll go through one example. So first we calculate the, uh, the x bar, the mean of the numbers, and then step two, find the deviation from the mean, the deviations from the mean, and then square each deviation, then sum up or sum add up the square deviations, and then divide the sum of the square deviations by n minus one, and then take the square root of the quotient from step five. So um, it sounds very simple, and I will give you a simple example how we do this. First, we need to compute the mean, and that is we add up all the numbers, which is 184, divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So our mean is equal to 23. So 
put it x bar or mean. The next step is the next column we subtract each data value from the mean. The mean from each data value rather. So it's x minus x bar. That, that'll be the next column. So 7 minus 23, that's minus 16. And 9 minus 23, it's minus 14. And 18 minus 23 is minus 5. And 22 minus 23 is equal to minus, uh, minus 1. This was minus 3 here, or minus 5. Oops. It's minus 1. And so 27 minus 23 is 4. And 29 minus 23 is 6. And 32 minus 23 is 9. And 40 minus 23 is 17. So that's the x minus x bar in the formula here. So now we've got the x minus x bar. The next column would be that we square each number. In other words, we square minus 16, we square minus 14. So that's this is now x minus x bar squared. So we square minus 16 and we get 256. 256. And we square minus 14 and that is equal to 196. And we square minus 5, that will be positive 25. And then we square minus 1, which would be positive 1. And we square 4, 16. We square 6, and that's 36. And we square 9, that will be 81. 81. And we square 17, and that's 289. So the next step is we add up all the sum of the square deviations. We add, the, you know, we add up all these numbers, and I already did that for you, and that turns out to be 900. So the sum of all these square deviations is 900. So now we're almost done. In other words, from the formula. S equals square root of the sum of x minus x bar squared divided by n minus 1. We now have 900, that's the sum of the squares, the sum of the square deviations divide by n minus 1, and n was equal to 8, so we need to divide by 7, 8 minus 1 is 7, and then, so the square root of this quotient is about 11.3. So that is approximately <coughs> the, uh, the uh, standard deviation for this given data set. So we can say this S equals, or it's approximately equal to 11.3. So every data set has a standard deviation. Okay. So um, now this is a little bit uh, cumbersome. As you can see here, we're dealing with integers, and that makes it a lot easier yet. But if we had, let's say, uh, numbers as decimals, and you can imagine uh, how much work there would be, and and uh, the the you know, amount of attention you have to pay to every little detail uh, to get it right. And so there are standard deviation calculators. 
And what I like for you to do is I like for you to take a data set, maybe this one, or pick another data set, make up your, on yourself, and go through the calculations similar to what I did here, and compute the standard deviation just to get a feel for it, what it looks like when you do it by hand. Because no one in, in the real world would compute the standard deviation by hand unless it's an emergency situation, they didn't have access to, a, let's say, a calculator or something. But in most scientific calculators that are you know really powerful, like the TI-84 and so on, uh, as well as Excel, you can compute the standard deviation by data set in basically no time. Uh, it's very easy to do that. Um, again, I would just recommend uh, to go to a YouTube video that explains how to compute the standard deviation in Excel. And uh, so from that, from this point on, then you use technology that would really save you a lot of time. But I think to get a feel for what the standard deviation is about, it's a great idea to do it at least once manually, like what I did here. When we find the standard deviation of a frequency distribution, it is a little bit more complicated, but if you follow me, uh, if you follow along here, uh, we do this step by step, and then you'll see how it goes. So first of all, we have our values here, and the corresponding frequencies here. Then there's a column for the value times frequency, and the deviation of the uh, frequency minus the mean, and then we square the deviation, and then square deviation times frequency. So that's the, uh, the setup uh, for the table here. And so now we're going to work it out here. So value times frequency, that's pretty straightforward. 2 times 5 is 10. 3 times 8 is 24. And 10 times 4 is 40. And 5 times 2 is 10. So then the sum is 84. And so we have as a mean, uh, the mean x bar would be 84 divided by 25, the sum of the frequencies. And so that would be equal to 1 point 1.36. So now we subtract the value x from x bar. So 2 minus 1.36. So 2 minus 3.36 is minus 1.36 and 3 minus 3.36 is minus 0 0.36 and 4 minus 3.36 is 0 0.64 and then 5, uh, 5, um, 5 minus 3.36 is 1.64 So now we square these deviations and we get 1.8496. So in other words, that is minus 1.36 to the second power equals 1.8496. Then 0 0.36 squared is 0 0.1296. And 0 0.64, 0 0.64 squared is 0 0.4096. And 1.64 squared is 2.6896. 2.6896. So these are the differences squared. The square of this number equals this number, the square of this number equals that number, etc. 
So you square each one of these differences, the deviations. Now the next last step is we multiply the squared deviations times their corresponding frequencies. So we multiply 1.8496 to 1 times 5 and that's equal 9.2480. So we multiply the frequency times the squared deviation. So 8 times 0 0.1296 is 1.0368 and 10 times 0 0.4096 is 4.0 nine six zero and then two times two point six eight nine six is five point three seven nine two the next step is adding the squared deviation times frequency in other words the sum of these numbers the sum is equal to 19.76 19 yeah so then the standard deviation would be the square root of the sum of the square deviations times the frequency so 18 or 19.76 rather divided by the uh, sum of the frequencies minus 1, so 25 minus 1, so that's the square root of 0.8233, and so that's equal to about 0 0.91. So that's how we compute the uh, standard deviation of a frequency distribution, step by step. So this would be a good uh, uh, model to pattern yourself after if you do it manually. I would recommend that you study example number five in the book on page 700, and that is comparing populations based on samples. Um, where you look at the uh, standard deviation and the uh, mean of certain uh, populations or samples and um, come to conclusions about that. So example number five is an excellent, excellent uh, example of that. So be sure to study that. The next topic we'll be studying is called Chebyshev's theorem. And when I first saw that, I was, to be honest, I was quite surprised. But it says this, for any set of numbers, regardless how they're distributed, the fraction of them that is within k standard deviations of their mean, where k is a number greater than 1, is at least 1 minus 1 divided by k squared. So that'll tell us how many... Uh, uh, of how they're distributed. So it's a very simple formula, and uh, so let's look at how that, what that really means. It's, it's simple to, to read, it's simple to apply. And so let's look at example number six, uh, applying the Chebyshev's theorem. And um, the question is, what is the minimum percentage of the items in a data set that lie within three standard deviations of the mean? Okay, so um, what it really means is that um, if you have a distribution, let me just give you a little picture of that. So here's a distribution, and let's say it kind of looks like this. 
and of course the mean would be here, then there would be one standard deviation, two standard deviations, three standard deviations, one, two, and three to the left. So the question is, how much of the data set, uh, what's the minimum percentage of the items that are within three standard deviations of the mean? So when they're talking about three standard deviations, that means three standard deviations to the right and three standard deviations to the left. So in other words, what's the minimum percentage of the data set in here? So in this case, then k is equal to three, and then the percentage that lies within three standard deviations of the mean would be one minus one minus one divided by three squared, or one minus one ninth, and so that would be nine ninths minus one ninth would be eight ninths. And as a percentage, that would be equal to about eighty-eight point nine percent. So approximately eighty-eight point nine percent. Now again, that's a minimum. It could be more. But it's a pretty good approximation, as it turns out. So that's what Chebyshev's theorem says. And uh, so, by the way, Mr. Chebyshev, a very famous mathematician, is certainly known for more than this theorem. Uh, he, he was very famous for a lot of things. But anyway, this is certainly one of the important things in statistics that he developed. The last item of section 12.3 is the so-called coefficient of variation. So for any set of data, the coefficient of variation measures relative dispersion. So we talk about that in an example in just a moment. It is calculated as follows. V, the coefficient of variation, is the standard deviation by the mean times 100%. For example, or the coefficient of variation for a population is sigma divided by mu times 100%. So in one case it's a sample, the other one it's for a population. And example 7 gives us an idea um, what we're doing here and why that, that why it matters. So here are two, two, uh, uh, two distributions, samples A and samples B. Here are the numbers for A and the numbers for B. So using technology like Excel or some other programs, the, uh, the sample mean for distribution A is 16.167, and for B it is equal to 153.167. And then the standard deviation for sample A is equal to 3.125. And the standard deviation for sample B is equal to 25.294. Now the coefficient of variation for distribution A, V sub A, is equal to 19.3. And the coefficient of variation for sample B is equal to 16.5. So what does all this mean? Well, it see, it, you can see that the uh, sample B has a much larger dispersion in terms of standard deviation, considerably larger. But sample A has actually a larger relative dispersion, or coefficient of variation. So the dispersion within sample A is larger as a percentage of that sample's mean. So relative to the sample mean, it has a larger dispersion than sample B. 
So what this does, it, it kind of helps normalize the uh, various factors for the you know, standard deviation and the mean. So uh, again, it helps us compare the uh, statistics on samples a little bit better. That's what the coefficient of variation is about.